So I can talk now. I can't see live. Eh? You're still there. <laughs> okay, hang on. All right. Okay, we're live. Okay, hi everybody. Welcome to another episode of Conversation. Today is the eighth episode means that I have already done this for eight weeks now. Uh, some people ask whether how long am I going to do this. Um, I guess I'm going to do this forever till the day I take my last breath because I think this will follow and um, journey along uh, different parts of my life. So today we have a very special guest. I think he's no stranger to a lot of you. Uh, I think you can see him uh, online now also. Uh, it's Dr. Sheikh, right? Yeah, hi. Yeah. Uh, Sheikh Alauddin, yeah, I'm uh, a friend of uh, Valencia and uh, I'm the CEO of uh, Singapore Silat Federation and I've been in Silat for decades and uh, I would love to share with every one of you and uh, let's see what's in store. Valencia. Sure, uh, maybe you want to share with us, um, how do you get started with Silat? Well, it's, uh, I started Silat very late, at the age of 15. I do not know anything about Silat. What on mm. earth is Silat? Right? I do not know the meaning. I do not know the action. I do not know anything. I was just love to play football. I started off playing football, plastic ball, uh, at the court of the Tolok Kurau Secondary School. Yes. Then, uh, yeah, in a day, uh, one of the day, uh, a friend of uh, twins, my friend Raman and Raza bring me to Teluk Kurau where I'm staying at uh, Duchat Place uh, in, uh, in junction of uh, Teluk Kurau. So mm. the mosque in Lorong K is very uh, close to my house. So we went there. They say that uh, we can kick a ball. At the end, until today, I never kick a ball. <laughs> but then instead of that, I kick people by having silat. And I said, what is this silat all about? The, then I attended one of the day in, on Friday night. Then I saw this weird uh, dressing from this Silat group wearing green uh, uniform with yellow lace and so on. I say, what is this? Yes. And then we do push-ups, sit-ups and so on. I found out that I couldn't do a, a push-up. You just imagine. Okay. That is very bad. And I'm very scared, very shy, very... Uh, very introvert. Everything I mm. can't do when I was just like under my arms. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty funny. That's where I started off in the age of 15. Today yeah. I'm 53. So basically you can start to do your calculation and see uh, how long is that. Yeah. Correct. Um, I saw that you actually, wait, let me see. Age of 15, you started Silat, right? Right. And then in 1990, World Silat Championship in Holland, you won your first World Silat title for Singapore. Right. So I was just looking at it. Um, 1990, you were 23, right? Right. Yeah, that was the year I was born. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> yes. So um, I think there are a lot of um, things that you have seen um, coming such a long journey. So what are the valuable lessons you have learned as an athlete back then? And uh, how has that helped you with your work with the Federation now? Well, um, as I say, I do not know anything pertaining to Silat. And mm. I, I'm an introvert. And I'm, I'm always uh, do not know a lot of things. Because I stay in yes. Kampong. Basically, uh, you are staying with a family. You don't do much and mm. so on. But Silat have taught me a lot of changes physical strength it makes me more like uh, stand up and dare to speak up uh, then face people i still remember my first fight in uh, 1984 i was mm. like shiver to the spine and i was like wanted to pee and uh, and i was <laughs> like what's going on with me like a roller coaster in my my whole body and it goes mm. on and on and on until one time i was telling myself look why i'm here mm. why i want to do this why make myself suffer? But yeah. uh, ultimately, Silat have changed from one to after another. And I become stronger from mm. one push-up to 100 push-up from cannot do chin-up at all and do a lot of chin-up and do weight training. 
and start to build everything and become more confident there to do a lot of things and yeah. and so on and until today you have to carry the whole of silat and bring to the next level so of course mm. silat have changed me tremendously mm. how how do you think that has helped you with your work now now that you are the ceo of the federation well it's always flashback and i always i share with the staff with the athletes and so on like you know you got to be humble you got yeah. to learn every every day is a learning journey for you a, a process for you that you need to go through and so on uh, yeah. you cannot just do one thing and just get it everything done ultimately yeah. you got to learn you have to be daring to build your build the whole uh, system and right. uh, i did that with nothing my 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 uh, thought was just like just do it just mm. dare and just do it nothing else right. than that Uh, so that's that's what I've been doing, and it have shown that Silat have totally changed. The whole skin have changed and developed to a new face. Um, do you remember what's your most memorial competition match? Well, uh, of course, in 1990, I was. It was very funny when I was in Den Haag, Holland. Yes. Where uh, the kampung boy bringing uh, going there with a small team, and none of us actually are experienced and uh, dare to do things. Basically, uh, what we our, there's no sports science, there's no uh, coaching standards and so on. You just go mm -hmm. and try and just fight. So what happened yeah. when it comes to my time before that? We are fighting in the velodrome, so mm -hmm. it's all enclosed. Where this uh, black guy, who is a kickboxer, and he yeah. looks very uh, scary, and the sound that he kicked the padding like dong, dong. Then he say, "Who is this? What is this?" Everyone, like, hey, your opponent, your opponent, you're gonna die, man. Your friend, your friends are telling you you're gonna die because you're gonna mm. fight with this guy. And we are like the bones all are very soft and everything, mm. but. Ultimately, my friends told me, "Hey, why not you do warm ups and everything?" I say, "Hey, waste time lah. I just go down and fight." So <laughs> true enough, I just put myself a kick quiet, doing nothing, no warm up, nothing. I just go down, and I just tell myself that, "Please help me, God." That's it, and that's it. I won. Mm -hmm. I fight uh, three fights, uh, yeah. all taller than me, all bigger than me, and the fights all. And I use my weapon. It's all the sweeps and the drops, yeah. and of course my punching is not stronger than them because they are from kickboxing uh, side. Are very strong people. Mm. So ultimately, it's believing in your own self and make yeah. it happen. So that's the right. best of ever that I feel that yeah, I can make it from zero to hero. It's mm. not overnight, but uh, you you have. You try and you can make it happen. So that was the beauty of all, and you feel you're on top of the world. Basically, the 1990 was the most beauty ever, and of course, there's a lot because I've been competing a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, the second one in 1993, Sea Games, that is your in Singapore, and yes. of course, you are become been watched by the people that hey, this is a world champion, international champion, and he's fighting. Mm -hmm. And I was against Crony and very nerdy and all that, but again, thank God that it fulfilled my dream to become a, a champion. Uh, mm -hmm. And lastly, the best of all is being a player coach in 1999 Sea Games in Brunei, mm -hmm. and I have to become a champion. I tell myself I must win, and my players must win. And true mm -hmm. enough, that year we won three to seven. Three, two, seven, mm. three gold, two silver, seven gold, uh, seven wow. uh, bronzes. What happened after that? I got, uh, I was crowned as a, a coach of the year, mm -hmm. and one of my athletes, sports boy of the year, under SNOC. Wow. And we got the nod by Sports SG and saying that, okay, we're gonna give you a house. So that's where mm -hmm. we got the center uh, of excellence in uh, Bedok North. Uh, we got all that. So these are very beautiful layup that I have uh, went through and achieved. Yeah. Yeah.
uh, for those that are watching on uh, live uh, on Facebook, feel free to just comment and then uh, ask questions uh, for Dr. Sheikh if you have. Uh, don't be shy because we have like about 24 people watching online now. So uh, just feel free to ask us questions and we will answer them during the interview. Uh, back to the interview is that um, I wanted to ask what was the mindset or like a mental mindset that you had besides like not warming up uh, what was that mindset you had for your 1990 match? <clears throat> Basically, uh, you have to be yourself. You must grip yourself. You must bring yourself together. You mm. cannot like, the hand is the other side, your head is somewhere else, your heart is somewhere else. Because no mm. one is coming with you. You only have your coach also, he wonder himself. And yeah. he will just bring you to the corner. Uh, you mm. know, but you need people to be around you. Back yes. then, I want people to come with me and hold me and like, hey, I'm like oh. going for the real <laughs> death fight, you know. But that's <laughs> what, as a kid, you will be thinking all that. But mm -hmm. one thing is good, I keep myself all together. Yeah. I keep, regroup myself together. And that's it. Because back then, you don't have a mental uh, coach to help you out. Right. You don't have right. any strategies. You don't have anything. All right. So whatever that you have learned, you've been drilling on whatever that you are good at. That's yeah. where you apply. So my timing was good and everything. And I was staying firm on my ground that you come in, you're going to get down. That's all. So yeah. that kind of rehearse in my mind, that makes me a champion. Mm, how do you manage family time during that season of competition? Well, when I got married, uh, of course, uh, from day one, uh, <clears throat> all my kids will follow me. All mm. my wife will follow me to all my training place mm. uh, where uh, when the first kid was born, she also will bring the, the small one to play around. So that's why it's been adapt. That means the kids mm. grow uh, together with me in Silat and on the street. Basically, wherever mm. I am, they are there. So from number one to number six, all of them are there until they grow so big now and they, be, they themselves become a champion. Uh, they can decide their own and so on. But of course, yeah. um, uh, at one stage, the six of them are with me competing and so on. And mm. now four of them competing. Uh, but somehow or other, the, the one that can handle themselves, I reduce myself to, to give more instructions to them that they can decide. Mm. But of course, can simple guiding is good enough. Uh, because nowadays, it's a different mindset. Kids will want to have their own way and means yeah. of doing it. But sometimes they can't mirror themselves exactly whether they are doing correctly or not. So you mm. sitting from outside, you can see much better. Yeah. yeah. Was it hard um, as a role of a father because you had to juggle between your training as an athlete and also a father to your kids as well? How do you juggle that? Basically, you just have to carry them and bring them around. So they doesn't talk much. All right, we'll just follow. My wife doesn't talk much. We'll just follow and help me, push me as much as possible. So basically, mm. uh, no no uh, problems for me. They wow. don't say, hey, I don't want to be around. I want to stay at home. No, it doesn't stay. It doesn't, there's no issue of that. So let's say mm. I have a, a big car. Everyone goes inside. We travel everywhere from morning till night. If mm. Saturday, Sunday, morning till night, morning till night, morning till night. If I start to start to do coaching, I was yes. training, I was coaching. That means my Monday to Friday, I was training. Saturday, Sunday, I was coaching. So it's just mm. like they will just have to follow. So if let's say uh, I start to coaching 100%, mm. I don't compete anymore. They will mm. just follow Monday to Sunday. Sunday, mm. we have more session, five, six session. So they will just eat outside together. We just play together. We go seaside, go yeah. shopping mall to kill the time and then boom, go to the next session. So mm. basically, I'm blessed with that, that we come together. They know the moment I got to be selfish, the moment you lose them a bit, they kick ball. They mm. kick ball, they will say goodbye to Silat. That's a problem for, for me, of course. Uh, <laughs> so for me, it's like, just keep their mind thinking that they also can punch, they also can kick. They also mm. can play with their brothers and uh, sister, their si uh, all of them together. Mm -hmm. And then they share with their friends. They got a lot of friends. They can play. So from there, it yeah. grows like that. Yeah. 
Um, then how do you manage the sibling rivalry among your children? Because you have six kids, right? So how do you manage that? And then at the same time, also motivating them to be their best that they can be for their sport. You see, all my kids, I think they, they start late. Also like me. I start okay. in, They start very young. When they are birth ready, they start to <laughs> crawl. They follow everywhere. Correct? So yes. they will learn. But they are slow in terms of catching up the moves mm. and their and it turn fights they can uh, easily win or not. It's not like that. So mm. I see they actually only develop after uh, when they hit maybe uh, sec four. Yeah, yes. maybe they're going into the seventeen years and above. So sixteen. They start like 15, 16, 17. Then they can start mm. to see that, hey, I want to be like my sister. My sister mm. can make it, right? My sister yeah. in sports school. Then from there, it will just go on. All of my four kids are in sports school. Then mm. now, rivalry, I don't see much when they are young because they just okay. being naughty each other. They play each other. But the moment... When uh, the sister start to compete and become a champion in international, got yeah. silver in some other sea games and and world games and so on, mm. then they start to see. But they don't really see that how can I become a champion? Like uh, Firdaus, uh, he been trying and he been failed. He mm. he couldn't make it. But suddenly Farhan goes up. Mm. Farhan is the let me be blunt. He's one of the worst of all the the ones that make the, the brother and the sister mm. that Fidaus and Nor Shafika. So mm. he's more on the slow, keep quiet, doesn't talk much. Mm. But the moment you change him, 17 years old, he become a champion. And people got shocked. Not only the sibling, the mm. whole entire Silat Federation, Silat uh, community, look at what? Farhan can make it like no way he can make it because his kick, his punch, his ability, his mindset is all not there. He's from sports mm. school, but he couldn't just couldn't make it. So the moment he become a champion and then become a champion again and then become a champion, then it's an eye opener. Then Fidaus mm. was saying that, hey, how come he can do it? He's my younger brother. He can make it. Why not I? Then the seriousness came in. That's mm. when I want to be like him or even better. Though he doesn't say that, I can see that how seriousness is him. So yeah. you can see that now all of them are doing very well. Mm. And of course, uh, it's good for the rest of them, the younger ones and all the yeah. like community. Um, what do you think uh, or what is your parenting style? Because I think you i've seen you coach them before like recently you did um interview with on the red dot am i right i think it at november 2019 so oh. it showed a lot of um insights about how you manage your kids professionally as an athlete but also as your own children as well so what do you think is your parenting style well i'm a two person <laughs> yeah, i'm a two person one at home or you go leisure and so on, I will like, love them so much. I will give whatever they want. Okay. The moment they go into Silat, the moment they go into uh, thinking to fight and so on, I'm a different person. My cap will just switch. And mm. I say, you are the same like others. I punish you, I punish the rest. I push you to the wall, no mercy. So basically, mm. they know that very well. I don't like, hey, Fidaus, okay, relax, no problem. You can come late and so on. Shafika comes late to the training. I scold her. I make her do push-up. She cry in front of everyone. This is to show that everyone is the same level. You are good, you go up. So that is good for them and safeguard myself. And mm. that's how it goes until today. Today, as a parent, whatever they want, I will provide them. And... Yeah. Uh, I got no issue and they love it and uh, I'm not hard in that manner. Uh, but in terms of Silat, no way. Mm. They know that how hard I go for it. Like I yeah. push other athletes, 
the same goes to them. So mm. that's where I I putting myself into two categories. Uh. Of course, as a parents, you have the soft spot with them. <laughs> you sometimes some I'm quite hard in the training and so on. Yeah. But somehow rather when I see my son fighting, I was like, ah, you know, you have the soft spot of it. Yes. Make sure you don't injure lah. He will achieve lah. This lah, mm. that lah. All the mindset is thinking, 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 thinking. Worry, 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 worry. Same yeah. like the other parents, you know, they be worried mm. for everything. Correct. Right. So for me, it's the same. I'm a human being, and the same thing. It goes. I have my soft spot. I have the hardcore, and I have all that. So I have to divide accordingly. Hmm. Do you think it's um sometimes it's hard for your children to switch? Because they see you as a father at home, but then at training in Silat, um, you are like the head coach. So sometimes is it like a bit of like they cannot differentiate or they feel they don't know how to put the correct cap on. For them, I guess uh, they know because they will just follow, no question asked. Mm. Unless they say, "I want to drink," can you buy me drink? Normally, the smaller ones. I say, "Okay, <laughs> I get the mom or I get my whoever to get for them." Yeah. Uh, I want hungry. I want to eat. So these are the standard essential that they yeah. want. Other than that, they say no. I cannot do training. Uh. Mm. Ah, that one, no way. <laughs> From last time until today, no way. There's no excuse because they. I have not. I don't need to say anything. They know. Yeah. Or they will say today I injured. I cannot. Same like other athletes. So <laughs> that's okay. So that is good. Uh, respect is very important because I build uh, respect uh, to the teammates, to the elders, yes. create as a family in the silat. Mm-hmm. All these things is very important. If not, Correct. there will be a lot of breakaway. There's a lot of unhappiness and so on. Correct. Mm, now going on to the circuit breaker, right? Because I think all of us. Um, I mean, I have heard some people say that circuit breaker and phase one, which where we are at now, is not much of a difference. So a lot of people keep thinking like they are still in circuit breaker. So I wanted to ask, how have you helped like your national athletes stay in touch with their training during this time? Well, uh, circuit breaker, good, bad, and ugly. Yeah. <laughs> the good thing is you come together with the family. You mm. see them normally. You are somewhere overseas. You are busy yes. with your things. You only see them. Yes. You come back, they sleep, or you sleep. Basically, like that. So you don't really talk nowadays. You meet them every day. That's a good thing. The bad thing is you cannot go out and meet friends. You cannot even simply go out here and there. Not that mm-hmm. easy, right? Mm. However, yeah. the the game have to go on. The training have to go on. Yeah. So what we do is we don't want to pressure them because. They also have to answer to their homeworks and all that, which is good. Mm. They can do a lot of study and self study and whatever their teachers are giving them. We have right. seen them every day. They have to do a lot of things. Somehow or other, they have to keep pumped. Their heart need to be pumped every time and right. keep mobile and so on. We do a time lapse that we give them a liberty to train on their own three times a week and let let me know. You know, mm. send all your videos and everything. So we keep track. We will do calling. Yeah. We do WhatsApp and see how they do it. For the spec scholars, yeah, those are more serious athletes. They train two times a day. They engage mm. with the. Uh, we connect with them with the SSI Sports Institute to yeah. work with them on strength conditioning, and we will work with them on the skill or the. They do on their own. They have a free play of thinking what they want to do. Mm. Because mm. you go in the national team, big group, bang, 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 hardcore, one and a half hours, two hours or more. Yeah. It's just very routine. And now they have a flair. Maybe they have a chance to develop their own uh, type of skill that they can deco- uh, re- uh, recover, discover, right. and so on. Even right. they can go into video analysis to check on their fights. Opponent mm. fights and on, yeah. so with and now we are doing all with Zoom every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, I will be in touch with them. Let's go on mm. training now. So that's mm. what we've been doing, and then we still keep up toes with them and saying that you cannot make it, you don't train. Give me an evidence, doctors right. and uh, whatever lah to show that uh, that 
they are responsible athlete mm, that sorry. they need to fulfill and of course there's a government grants and so on that they uh, got from them they have to fulfill me they have to fulfill lah. so that's mm-hmm. where we are working it's a bit difficult because you don't really physically see them but mm. you see them from far and mm. then you can shout and telling them that whether they are doing correct enough enough of the high or kicking and so on so i think uh, it's good we've been doing this i see that you will hit another and until end of the month and maybe mm. here and there i'm not sure august we can have the training start uh, officially or not i'm not sure but we'll see maybe in august uh, mm. a small group or those who are really that we think is important to train them for the future championships correct uh we have questions coming in i think there's quite a lot of questions <laughs> from facebook uh okay. so we'll start with the first question is that someone is asking what will the future impact be of covid-19 for sila internationally well uh, right now everyone is just hungry and waiting to go into international championships hmm. but as we know we have to uh, uh, the government our government is excellent they are working with all other governments and so on see whether the borders mm-hmm. can open and so on whether they are right. clear to do it and so on but let me share this year totally silat will not have any activities pertaining to championships or any major uh gatherings we will not mm-hmm. have that we already have mm-hmm. informed all our athletes and even yeah. internationally so we have postponed everything to 2021 so i hope that in 2021 starting the first event will kick off mm-hmm. will be in march that is asian indoor games in asian yeah. martial art games in uh, bangkok so mm-hmm. that was the, the then after that you will also have uh belgium open in march Uh, I'm sorry. I think uh, the martial art uh, games is in April. So March we have the Belgium Open that it kicks off until December. Mm. 2021. There's a lot of big championship. You have World Championship. You have Asian uh, uh, indoor games. You mm. have uh, Asian Championship. You got all the big championship is there. So at least will be ready. they have to be ready mind body physically and everyone is waiting for 2021 to kick off with all the championship that they want yes. to participate in okay uh we really got a lot of questions so <laughs> i will ask you okay the second uh, question is one at one point you were an athlete coach running the uh federation so you were wearing a lot of caps so the question was they wanted to know how did you manage see first and foremost why i go into this the question <laughs> here is i do not know what is it like if i have a choice back then if i thinking mm-hmm. not rationally i don't want to be part of this seriously i just want to compete and win medals without having any issues and problems yeah but i see that hey I was blessed to get awards, champions, and so on. It's about time that I'm giving back to them. What else I want? Mm. So, I say that Sila cannot be training at the outdoor, at the roadside. I was training at the roadside at the people association at the roadside. No, a uh, very dark, no equipment, nothing. Mm. And then I was telling myself, we must have a house if we want to build a champion. we must have a house we must strategize everything we must have state of the art equipment facilities professional coaching education and so on yes but thank god i was the committee member in back then in 1998 i was a player coach i was a athlete coach and i was mm-hmm. a management committee back then no one when we got the award 1999 i shared with you all earlier yes. Sports SG saying that, hey Silat, do you want a center of excellence for Silat? Mm. No one, my management committee will want because this one, you have to raise fund, you have mm. to do a lot of things. We have to raise seven hundred and fifty thousand. I wow. take the ownership that I will want this because this is the first and the last chance that you can get this opportunity. Mm. Thank God, I got it. 
I use my, I was getting four thousand dollars a month. Let me just be open. Four thousand a month back then. I employed two staff, which cost me uh, one I pay thousand uh, two, another one I pay thousand eight. So three thousand dollars I was giving to the staff, where I was only one thousand to build the House of Champions <coughs> in Bedok. Hmm. And everything was doing, and thank God, I just released the place to Sports SG for other sports to use. Yes. After what, sixteen years, and now we have a better place for us to build on. Correct. Uh, it's what just are the... whether, it's uh, just whether you want to do it or you don't want to do it. Whether you dare true. to do it, and you are wholeheartedly you want to do it, things will definitely will be there. Mm. Yes, it's hard. It's hard. No, no joke. It's hard. But you see now what what happened to Silat. Silat have grown tremendously. Yes. It has a, a lot. Over the years, actually, it has a lot. Right. There's a lot more to do. So, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, the next question is that what are the challenges you face as the CEO of uh, Singapore Silat Federation? Well, if you can see... Silat is always uh, you need to to push, keep pushing for a lot of things. Financially, sports SG will not give you hundred percent. They must make mm -hmm. sure that you also work. You must know the hardship because it's a choice. You want to yeah. build Silat. You want to build all the sports. You have to find your ways and means to do it. All mm -hmm. right. So yeah. we are trying very hard to develop as much as possible to do fundraising to build on. We have more funding. We have people that uh, contribute to us. We can mm. build more about Silat. Yes. And of course, uh, secondly, is to make people understand is really what is Silat. And Silat is no more like people think it's a kampung Silat where they don't even know, never heard about Silat. So in the promotion and everything, we must push to that and make it happen. So I do not know why I want to push this thing and I want to develop Silat into the world and put Silat to Olympics one day because I think is that I got nothing to prove on myself but I think the mm. culture the sport of this martial arts Silat it have to be up there and par with the rest of the martial arts like MMA kickboxing and some others which I think is important that Silat to be up there and give the opportunity to everyone to to enjoy uh, doing mm. Silat. Correct. So you mentioned just now in your answer earlier that you're talking about Silat for Olympics, correct? So one of the questions that actually it was, I think, quite a popular question is how is the strategy to bring Silat to Olympics? Well, I have put up the blueprint on how we want to manage to go into Olympics. It's not an mm -hmm. easy task. There's thousands mm -hmm. of sports want to be part of Olympics. They also pushing uh, the envelope as mm. much as they can. And I'm part of different types of martial arts and I'm part of also pushing some other martial arts to go in. However, the issue here now is very simple. You need really a team to manage how to mm. bring Silat to Olympics. That is International Silat Federation. Must yeah. bring in all the countries together. Secondly is, of course, financial. Mm. You need funds to run a lot of things and of yeah. course uh you got to do a lot of lobbying you got to do a lot of promotion to make understand the sports and you have to make sure that everyone learns silat everyone mm -hmm. preach about silat talking about silat that's the only way that you can put silat to olympics failing which there's a tons of criteria there's tons of it. Yes, I have put forth this thing to uh, the International Silat Federation. Uh, I put a target of 2032 for Silat. Okay. However, I can't do alone. The International Silat Federation have to really put the money, put everything, mm. get everyone involved and make it happen. That's where we can. In 2032, Indonesia is lobbying to be, to, to take uh, 2032 Olympics in Indonesia. Wow. So they are still in the running to Correct. make sure that uh, give he, give them the chance after doing the Asian Games. Mm. So, Correct. of course, if, uh, if uh, Olympics in 
in uh, Indonesia, I'm sure yes. Silat will have the opportunity to be there as one of the spots. Mm. So let's keep our finger crossed and let's work hard and keep going doing the promotion uh, Silat towards Olympics. Mm. Um, I wanted to ask, you say 2032, correct? Right. Uh, will you be still uh, leading the forefront of Silat in 2032? After going a lot of uh, obstacle, yes. after going through a lot of obstacle, hardship, really, really hardship. Yes. I can't tell you all now. You will never, really, I can cry. But however, it's a tough journey. Mm. Why should I back out? If I die today, okay, <laughs> someone have to carry the, the load. And whether mm. they become, they really want to push as what we do. Yeah. Uh, but ultimately, I will bulldoze as much as I can. And of course, I want everybody to come together to support mm. me, to push Silat to the highest level uh, that it can be. Of course, for now, the pinnacle will be just Olympics. Then from there, it will mm. just water down to every everything else, you know. Mm, yeah. Correct. Mm, uh, next question is, what are your plans for Silat in a COVID situation? Well, for now, uh, we will try to do online courses for coaching okay. uh, in July. And then uh, we will do referee course uh, online uh, mm. in July. Then um, maybe this month, because we will have a new rules, I have done twice uh, physically with all of them before COVID. Yeah. And now I uh, was thinking that uh, why not I do online this month? So these are the plans uh, immediately from now till August. And mm. for national training, we will just continue doing the uh, on a Zoom uh, training with all the athletes. And that has been going on. And uh, I just keep my staff doing whatever that a lot of things we have been uh, holding back. And of course, mm. looking forward for 2021 and forward uh, how we can put Silat in Singapore and working with partners and so on to build Silat to the next level in Singapore. And of course, working with the international and Asian countries, how best we can put Silat and working together. We have to knock everybody, hey, don't sleep uh, because you need, <laughs> you need to wake up and uh, still continue thinking yeah, about correct. Silat. Rather than they say, ah, forget it. Uh, after, you know, COVID will be until end of the year. Mm -hmm. And uh, forget it. Just don't mm -hmm. do. Because I cannot find my money and let's do business or something like that. But that's why I keep having the connection with them and still giving them the uh, right. continuation to think about Silat. Mm. Um, there, was a, there was a comment that says that great to know that Dr. Sheikh is pushing Silat to Olympics. All the best. Jiayou. Team SG. Uh, heart shape emoji. <laughs> okay. Uh, we, we still have questions. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So one of the other questions is that they are saying that right now, MMA is considered the top level fight sport. So how can we make Silat to that level and garner interest to the younger generation? You see, uh, right now, I'm working with a lot of partners. Mm. I work with uh, Jiu-Jitsu uh, Federation. I work yeah. with the BJJ Brazilian. I work with other martial arts, giving the fair share to the Silat athletes to learn something mm. new and upkeep to the level. But I, right. I, I will not uh, offer this athlete to go into MMA because those athletes are molding them to become the champion in Silat. However, they need to know the growth because Silat, is, uh, Silat and martial arts is about self-defense. Yes. So you need to know about not only competing, but you do not know how to defend yourself. When you fight, you can in the arena, but mm. then on the street, you do not know what to do. Yes. So by having different multiple martial arts, this is great. Uh, so that's what I'm uh, putting on. And of mm. course, uh, I cannot project because we are a non-profit organization, whereas yes. MMA is all about commercial. And mm. I cannot be swinging that and pushing them, their mindset to go into uh, the commercial mindset. Of course, um, we have to popularize the 
uh, silat to the highest level to make people understand about silat, know the culture, mm -hmm. know the art of self-defense, know the sports, know the artistic part of it. Yes, because ultimately silat have the value goes into Hollywood because yeah. uh, we have uh, our silat athlete from Indonesia. They are in the Hollywood. They are in the movies. So wow. they are showing all the different, different types of uh, silat mm -hmm. move, which is really cultivate and really eye-catching for everybody. So this is a great move. We have mm. uh, the Reds 1, the Reds 2, and there's a lot other uh, movies that they are acting using Silat 100%, which is great. So they can see that on the self-defense, on the movie side and so on. Mm. Of course, uh, working with MMA uh, to make them understand about Silat. I'm part of one championship. I'm the president for Mixed Martial Arts Singapore. And yeah. I'm part of the, uh, I'm also the president for Martial Art in Instructor Association in Singapore. So basically, mm -hmm. we share these ideas, we share knowledge, we try to build ultimately because we are traditional sports, uh, we traditional martial art. MMA is a new thing. But yeah. of course, it goes up very fast. We learn as much as we can from them uh, in terms of the promotion, the marketing, and so on. I try mm -hmm. to put in Silat. But again, uh, we need a lot of partners to come in to support in developing Silat. Uh, uh, Correct. Um, the next question actually is um, something to what you have touched on. So people want to know what is your favorite Hollywood movie that has Panchak Silat in it? Well, as, uh, as I say, uh, it's very brutal, the rates. The rates that uh, I love, uh, Eco West and, uh, mm -hmm. and some of my friends up there who, who really uh, do a real nice action because I use that to sell Silat. Mm. So the rates is really crazy and the recent, recent ones are excellent uh, that I can share with everyone else so that I'm proud of because it's a mm -hmm. Silat move. Because when I started off, it's not fighting. I started off with artistic. So oh. the, the movement is all uh, basically is all on the like a movie, you know. It's yeah. very nice. Yeah. I, I've done I've done artistic silat before actually. <laughs> <laughs> you show me when, a bit now, again. <laughs> what one? <laughs> when I was in primary school, I was doing it for a uh, a production, a school production. All right. That's yeah, nice. so I was I was the village head. Then I had to like perform uh like artistic silat. Okay. That's mm. nice. Anyone teach you? Yes. Yeah, so there was uh, our school hired uh, a guy to come into the school to teach us uh, Silat. So we had to learn the artistic moves. Right. That's nice. And That's nice. Are you going to continue we, again? Are you yeah. going to continue again to do Silat at least as a uh, sideline of what you've been doing? I mean, I have I have asked Jason before because there was one time you all were recruiting like uh, you needed artistic <laughs> Silat. So uh, I don't know. I maybe next time. I'm not sure. Yeah, COVID over. You can join us. No problem. You'll be part of the <laughs> artistic team. Most welcome. Everyone is most welcome to be part of the uh, Silat and uh, mm. be it as a volunteer, be it as an athlete, or you want to be a competitor or just a student in a class. Yeah. Um, please come uh, and knock. Uh, not me, not me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, the question is that there's another one that says that will Sila ever be a professional sport like MMA or boxing? Well, as you can see that a uh, few years ago, mm -hmm. I was two years uh, supporting in Malaysia doing one Silat. One yeah. Silat is a pro Silat, exactly MMA uh, pro, but then they have to do the Silat move before they do the uh, fights. So mm. they, their dressing is not the MMA dressing, but we use a rash guard and three-quarter pants. Uh, before they do the fight, they do have to do the silat move, at least eight types of silat move, which I thought yeah. all the fighters, most of them come from all silat, uh, silat uh, students and mm. of course from other martial arts. And uh, we comp uh, they, we pay them to fly, we, we fly them in, we mm. pay win, lose and everything. Same like the One Championship or UFC. We pay them good uh, money and we've been doing for two years. 
Uh, mm. We have pro silat. After we finish with one championship, then it become like in Central Asia, there's a mixed silat where mm. other martial arts and so on. And also it's all about commercial. Uh, yeah. Full full context uh, 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 competition. Uh, then there is a silat bebas in Indonesia, silat bebas. So mm. all these things has been going on. And uh, maybe if you Google one championships and you Google mix silat, you can see all these uh, silat people are fighting professionally. That you kick, punch, elbow, uh, submissions, and all that. When when do uh, can we expect the next pro silat uh, competition? Well, let's uh, one silat uh, we hold back first because mm. in Malaysia it involves uh, the owners for all these are uh, from politics, so things are different. It's a new paradigm and a new move, new government. Everything changed. Mm. Right. But in uh, in Indonesia there is uh, this championship going on, but of course now COVID everything hold back and um, mix silat time to time every year one time they will do in Uzbekistan in Kyrgyzstan yeah. uh, in some other countries in Central Asia mm. um, I think this question would make you very happy but I think people are really noticing it so um, the question is how much weight have you lost during circuit breaker how did you do it <laughs> well you can see me slim a bit uh, <laughs> let me share with you. Uh, I was like a uh, seesaw battle when I was competing. Go up, go down, go up, go down, go up, go down mm -hmm. because of weight, right? Then you mm -hmm. eat uh, differently and so on. Then I didn't do diet anymore as usual. Uh, when you just coaching, you don't really becoming like an athlete. So you start to put on weight. Yeah. Then recently, recently when I was uh, training my son, uh, Sheikh Pais. He's is uh, 16 years old and uh, he's mm. going 17. Uh, basically, when I train him weight training, I need to put him on to 96, maybe 100 kilo. He's only wow. about 80 kilo. Then there's a lot of weight to put on. Mm -hmm. So he needs to do weight training and and and, and he's like uh, very uh, uh, young and do not know mm. much. So now he's huge. So to train him and put him a lot of weights and uh, bulking up. I must train myself. But where mm. I want to go? So just get more lean and proper dieting. And uh, I try to go zero on uh, as much as possible. Uh, for so far, for uh, nearly one month, I didn't really uh, eat anything I like. Uh, to be exact, I start to be very serious after uh, fasting month. Yeah. So the moment after fasting month, I go zero already. Uh, I cut down. Maybe Monday onwards, I don't take rice. I just take uh, salmon or tuna and all that. Yeah. So you can get much reduce of your body weight and look mm. much healthy and of course younger. <laughs> what what is the what is the food that you missed now that you have switched to a healthier diet? Well, uh, laksa is my favorite. Uh, curry dalcha is the uh, favorite. Uh, rendang is favorite. Uh, these are my three every day. So I can take uh, kuah lode and everything. All these are the the best uh, Malay food that the wow. But the laksa is the Chinese style. I I just love it. I mm. can eat every day. Uh, but now look, as you go older, a lot of things comes with you. Right mm. and last time when I was competing, I don't care anything, because why? You just want to fight and win. Yeah. And after that, if you don't do recovery, you got injury. I got a lot of fracture here and there. Then recovery very bad and so on. Now you start to feel the suffering. So that's where mm. I was thinking like let's have a good food, proper yeah. uh, program, do training uh, uh, as you can every day if possible. And mm. then uh, you don't need to take so long, whatever, one hour. And then for my age, yeah, one hour or even you can go more, why not? Get yourself yeah. healthy, reduce of all the sickness and everything. There you go. Mm. Have you uh, weight on the scale and see how much weight have you lost? Well, uh, before that, I was like very heavy. I was bulking up so much. 
Yesterday mm. night I weigh, I lost five kilo. Wow. Wow. I was like, wow, five kilo. But I know that I go leaner and, uh, you know, somehow rather, sometimes you feel like you want to eat. But yes. you say, no, I'm not going to eat. I'm going to yes. eat. Then, no, I'm not going to eat. You know, then I say, better don't That's touch. Right. <laughs> yeah. So right now, it's just plain water. You believe me? Every day, plain water. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. Dinner, that's all. Plain water. Last time, it's just kikapu, you know, and uh, <laughs> ice lemon tea, uh, coffee with milk. <laughs> Everything yes, yes. just dumb and you just feel it, you know? Yeah. Shook lah, shook. But after that, wow, here pain, there pain, that pain, mm. go hospital, go clinic, never end, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's there are two comments. Uh, one is from Gazila bin Amin. He says that respect to Doctor Sheikh, his dreams come true 24 years ago when he trained me next to Kalang Stadium. He wants to improve this sport to Olympics. Do you still remember this person? Of course, they are all uh, together back then. Uh, mm. Was training and so on. As I say, we train. I was training the athlete at the Kalang Stadium there, yes. the Kalang uh, People Association, very dark. Uh, we are at the sand, we are at the uh, roadside. And uh, you tell me, the best part, I use my friend uh, company's car, he can bring back home. So he have to put the mat on top of the car to go to the <laughs> showroom and bring back. And we match all the mattress also gone, as in everything peeling off. We have yeah. to come together. Is no joke. That's why I was telling myself that we need a house. Mm. People say, how to get a house? It's all about money. I say, just mm. do lah. Basically, my concept in Malaysia, terjun botol lah. You know, like jump like a bottle like that down and just do whatever happens lah, you know. And that's what I've been doing. And that's what, mm. uh, thank God, and we managed to change the skin and uh, we need to do a lot more things, but we need to come together. Everyone have to come in and support. Of course, if there's a sponsor out there that can really help us out, this will be great and continue to yeah. make it big for the sports. And because this, this sport is growing bigger and bigger, right. and of course, uh, we need to look back who is behind, behind us. Hmm. It's no more Sheikh Alauddin or any of the people that at my time or mm. in front of me, or my time, or just behind me. It's mm. further back, who's three years old, four, five, six, seven. These are the kids that want to see their mentor now, who's the champion now. I want to be like them. Last time, everyone would say, I want to be like him to become mm. the champion. Now, I pass the baton to whoever the champions. Now, yeah. 17 years old, people become, the kids become champion. So, they can look at them. They can do it. Why not? But must give them the opportunity to right. bring themselves up. There's no opportunity. There's no guide. They cannot go where they go astray. They go somewhere else. Hmm. Correct. Which damage the society. Hmm. Another comment from Zul is, thanks for answering the questions. Biggest respect to Dr. Sheikh and his team. Bring Penchak Silat at the highest level. Emoji, 100%, 100%, 100%. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, so, I mean, you mentioned about, like, giving um, opportunity to the younger generation. So, what advice can you give aspiring athletes who want to compete in Silat? Well, there's an opportunity. They must set the goal. This is a standard thing. What mm -hmm. I want, actually, when they say, I want to be a champion, enough for that. I want mm -hmm. to be a champion. That's the yeah. first goal that they must set. Secondly, if they do not know where to go, where to meet, who, and yeah. so on, they must talk to their parents. If their parents cannot come in and uh, make the decision and come to us, we will support them how best mm -hmm. that we can bring them. We create champions. We want these people who have the desire to, to be a champion. So that's the first slogan that they, they have to set their goal. I want to okay. be a champion. Finish. Secondly is when we talk to them, they come to us. What we want them to know that are they hungry enough when they train Correct. to lead them to become a champion, to represent Singapore, to carry the flag. Not Correct. because the set goal is to become a champion. So mm. their objective now to be in the first team and hungry, training very hard to be in the first team. They must yeah. think like that. 
Secondly is once they get that, I want to represent Singapore. I want to carry the flag of Singapore. Mm. That is a very important. It's an honor to the country that you serve the nation. You serve yes. the nation. Then after that, I want to carry the flag to become the champion and to show that I proud of my country. Mm. That I carry a Singapore flag. That one they keep. Uh, they need to keep pounding in their brain. The moment they become champion. They yeah. need to tell themselves that I need to be humble throughout their life. Correct. Throughout their life, if they suddenly they switch, you got to serve me rather than I serve you. Then that is mm-hmm. wrong, because right. athlete most of the time they become champion. They know they are, the the media publish them and they become big. Teach them. They yeah. forgot. You- they belong to where they forgot everything. Mm. So that's why I must create the culture of humbling all the yeah. time. Respect all the time. Then they can be the best and they can create the legacy. They mm-hmm. can be notable throughout the years and, and then uh, they create the names for Singapore in the highest level in the world. Mm. They carry the flag in Singapore. That means they serve the nation. So they have to have all these steps throughout. If I ask any of the athlete, I want to be a champion. But I don't see substance in them. When I mm. test them on the ground, I don't see it. Yeah. So we need to really cultivate this thing. We need to work with them. Then from there. But the first thing is, what's the goal? Mm. True. Um, I'm going to move on to like two like random funny question, fun questions. Then we'll move on to the last part, the rapid fire questions. Because uh, uh, already three o'clock, but no problem. Okay, so I wanted to ask is that, do you have a hidden talent? And if you do, what is it? Well, uh, from zero to hero, basically, I don't have any talent. Though my mother was telling me that I replicate her father that the only one the only one that do silat which nobody know the only one that I myself that maybe follow my grandfather from my mother's side wow so I was thinking but I to me it's just hardcore I climb slowly I do not know anything about Mm -hmm. silat so to me hidden talent for me, just be humbling. Just uh, you got to be sincere up here in whatever yes. you want you are doing. So if you are sincere, and then your the way you walk, everything is in tandem. Everything is proper. Yeah. Yeah. The moment you have any uh, mentality that is already crossed here and there that caused mm. you. Um, uh, thinking otherwise in whatever you do and you react in a rational manner, unrationally uh, thinking that cause unhappiness here and there, that will make your performance, your ability to go far will be going down. Anytime, it will just go down. Mm. So basically for me, uh, just be humble. Just be sincere. If you could have one superpower, which would you choose? I will want to make sure that my eyes look at you and you just bow down at me. So my eye will be like the superpower, the strongest of all. So that, listen to me. I'm not a god, but I just want like, the eye is so strong that bring you down to whoever. Because sometimes people, when you talk to certain people, they are very aggressive. Mm. Very, very aggressive. What? You know, so somehow or other, I say, if I have the power to tell you, looking, my eye looking at you, that's it. Yes, sir, you help me. <laughs> what, what I can do for you, you know, something like that, yeah. Mm. Uh, okay, so we are going to the rapid fire questions. I have 10 questions for you. So Ooh. basically how, how it works is that I will ask you a question really fast and you have to answer within five seconds. Wow. I just, just then, I just then. <laughs> okay, bring it on. Okay, so first one. Describe yourself as a teenager in three words. 
uh, nerdy, uh, introvert, and uh, very scared. <laughs> If your house was on fire, what two things would you run back in to take? Well, I will back then. It really truly happened. I use a hose and a bucket to throw. But of course, today now I will use extinguisher. Yeah, as in, if your house on fire, right? What are what are the two things that you will take and run out of the house? Oh, okay. So I will take uh, uh, my jewels, rings, <laughs> whatever I have, and uh, if I have my kids or my wife, I will take all of them out. How how you take? Because there's so many of them. You see my hand so big, and I'm big <laughs> enough to crowd them and bring it out. <laughs> okay, number three. What is the best advantage of being really tall? Well, uh, you see the you see up there where a lot of people couldn't see, and of course you can reach as high. There are a lot of people that don't have the advantage to go there. I don't need yeah. to use a stool. Favorite color? Blue. Uh, where do you want to go more than any other place in the world? Well, if uh, entertainment, of course, uh, Europe, um, <clears throat> uh, London. If on the religious aspect, of course, you want to go to the holy mm. uh, Mecca. That you should be there. Yeah. Uh, coffee or tea. I'm more to coffee. Uh, which do you prefer, logic or creativity? <laughs> I'm more into uh, logic. What's the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning? Well, nowadays, handphone is the first thing to check all the uh, uh, messages and everything yeah. else. Yeah. Okay, we got two more questions. What is the least Favorite type of music? Uh, <laughs> classical. <laughs> what? What is one food you wouldn't want to give up? Uh, <clears throat> laksa. <laughs> okay. Uh, finish your question, Shay. But I wanted to ask, where is your favorite laksa? As in, like, where do you eat it? Well, the the place that I ate, uh, quite a few places, but one already closed down by the street of the Brass Bazaar. There, yeah, uh, they have nice cockles and everything. It's all put there. You add add on and so on. So that's top of it that really kills me. I really want mm. uh, to go back there, but it's closed down. And uh, secondly, if not, I will go to um, Mandarin Singapore. Uh, uh, yeah, from there there is a nice laksa that you know you, you love it. You spend a bit, you enjoy the meal. Uh, uh, you know you feel mm. right deep from here down. <laughs> okay, there, there's one more comment from Junaini that says, "Thanks, Doctor Shay Valencia and SSF for making this podcast possible. God bless and Majula Singapore." Right, Majula Singapura. Thank you very much. Yes. Um. So we have actually come to the end of our podcast. Uh, I think a lot of people had a a good time uh, listening to what you have to share to us. And uh, really thank you for your time on a Sunday afternoon for spending this time with us and helping us to learn more insights about yourself and also about Silat as well. So we would uh see everybody next week again. So thanks, Doctor Sheik, for coming online with us. And uh, those on Facebook, thanks for staying tuned. Also, so we will see everybody next week again. So bye bye. My pleasure and bye bye to everyone. Thank you. Bye bye. It's a lot of. Uh, uh, what do you think? I think it was great. Joe, the yeah. live stream ended. Sorry. No. Uh, huh? I can't hear you, Joe. Oh, Joe, no. I, I, I know one who speak. Oh. Joe ended already. Ah. Uh. Oh, okay. He ended already. Oh, uh, yeah. I.
Yeah, I think it was it was quite good there. Eh? Yeah. Because Did I, I answer all the questions from the people or you stop some of them you never uh you never never Yeah, I think we answered all. Yeah. Yeah, so usually we try not to leave out any questions. I will try to like answer everybody's questions. Right. But I think not bad, eh? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, because you talk, uh, you 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 also good one. <laughs> Valencia. Okay, la. Yeah. Okay, la. <laughs> yeah, because I think you are used to uh this is your eighth time and you're gonna look forward, you enjoy doing it. So I think it's good.